In this video, I will introduce industrial sonic mechanics, bench scale ultrasonic liquid processor, BSP-1200. I will first show you all major system components, I have them separately here, after which I will show you how to disassemble the system in order to change the barbell horn, which is the part of the system responsible for delivering the high intensity ultrasonic energy to liquids, after which I will show you how the system can be reassembled. In this video, we'll be using the configuration which is assembled on a support stand rather than in an enclosure. The system consists of four major components. Component number one is the 1200 watt ultrasonic generator. Commonly it hangs on the wall or it could be positioned in a rack. For the purposes of this video we'll just have it down here. Component number two is the sealed water-cooled ultrasonic transducer. You have this uh, at the top of the assembly here. Uh, component number three is the barbell horn. There are several types of barbell horns available. The most commonly used type is the HBH or half-wave barbell horn. This is used for the flow-through processing. The other very commonly used barbell horn is the FBH, the full wave barbell horn, which is used in combination with, for example, a beaker for batch processing. Like that. This is the part of the assembly which you cannot see because it's inserted in the next fourth component, which is the reactor chamber. You have this here in the assembly, which has a lid and it also has a cooling jacket, which allows you to control the temperature of the liquid being processed. Other important system components include the ultrasound cable, which connects the generator and the transducer. The remote button switch, which turns the ultrasound on and off. The main working liquid lines. This is the inlet through which the working liquid is pumped into the reactor chamber and this is the main working liquid outlet through which the processed liquid is collected. And on this side there are cooling lines connected to a chiller which go through the cooling jacket on the reactor chamber and then frequently are daisy chained into the cooling jacket on the piezoelectric transducer in order to cool both. In order to disassemble the system, we will need several tools. We'll need two spanner wrenches that are commonly included with the system. High temperature silicone grease, also included. We'll also need a rubber mallet and a small adjustable wrench. We're now ready to disassemble the system. Step one is to turn the generator off and wait a few seconds. After this is done, disconnect the ultrasound cable from the top of the transducer. We're done with this part. Next, make sure there's no liquid in the main liquid lines. They need to be drained. When you make sure there's no liquid, you can disconnect the sanitary flanged half-inch connections. Sometimes they're also called tri-clamp connections. The next step is to disconnect the cooling lines. The cooling lines are connected by quick disconnect couplings which are valved, so you will at most see a few drops of uh, the cooling liquid. The following step is to take the rest of the assembly out of the support stand. Next, take out the thumb bolts that hold the horn and the transducer inside the reactor chamber. This can easily be done, done by hand. 
At this point, the transducer and the horn can be taken out of the reactor chamber. We're done with this part for now. We're now ready to separate the horn and the transducer. The horn can be separated by twisting it counterclockwise. So we will need to prevent the transducer from rotating as we rotate the horn. In order to do this, use the spanner wrench and place its pin into one of the three holes on the transducer and rest it against the table such that the spanner wrench will prevent the transducer from spinning counterclockwise. Please make sure not to rely on the sidearm or any of these two connections to prevent the transducer from spinning, only on the spanner wrench. Spanner wrench number two is placed into the corresponding one of the three holes on the barbell horn and will be used to spin the barbell horn counterclockwise. We will now use the rubber mallet to lightly tap the second spanner wrench in order to start the rotation. It shouldn't be too hard, just a couple of taps. Now the spanner wrench can be taken out and you can do the rest easily by hand. Now the transducer has been completely separated. The horn still has the lid of the reactor chamber on it. You want to remove that. And then you will see a couple of O-rings below the flange of this horn and above the flange. You will need to remove those as well. At this point, the system has been disassembled and we are ready to replace the barbell horn. Instead of this barbell horn, we'll be using a different one with a different amplitude amplification factor, meaning it will provide different ultrasonic amplitudes than the one we previously used. To assemble the system, first make sure that the mating surfaces of the horn and the transducer are completely clean. There should be no particles, nothing that can scratch these surfaces. Next, use a small amount of silicone grease on your finger and spread it on the horn's mating surface evenly, but not on the bolt. Next step is to place the first o-ring from the back end of the horn above its flange like so. Next, take the lid of the reactor chamber and place it for the o-ring above the flange like so. Next step Twist the horn clockwise with the connecting pin going into the transducer. You can do this by hand until you can't go anymore, at which point you will need to use spanner wrenches in order to tighten the assembly. The first spanner wrench will be placed from the top into one of the three holes of the transducer, like so. The second spanner wrench will be placed into one of the three holes on the horn, such that when you push down, the horn will be turned clockwise with respect to the transducer. Again, please make sure not to rely on the side arms or these connections. 
once you have the spanner wrenches positioned in this way, push down by hand At this point, the horn and the transducer have been assembled. Next. Place the second o-ring below the flange of the horn, like so. Now insert the horn into the reactor chamber making sure that all of the o-rings, that both o-rings went in evenly and the lid should then be aligned such that the holes in the lid align with the threaded holes for the thumb bolts. You also need to make sure that the side arms are aligned as well because they will be then placed in the support stand. You can now place the locking washers over the holes in the lid. Put in the thumb bolts. without tightening for now. Now again, make sure that the side arms are aligned. and start tightening these bolts in the crossing pattern little by little making sure to keep it even on all sides Finger tight is fine, it doesn't have to be extremely tight, but when you're done you want to make sure that the gap is closed. On all sides. Next, place the assembly into the support stand. Please note that the distance between these two may change because the length of the horn is not necessarily the same as the horn that you used previously. So you want to loosen the bottom one and find this distance. And slide the assembly in and tighten the bottom clamp. Next, connect the cooling lines Reattach the main working liquid lines
the tools. Connect the ultrasound cable to the top of the transducer. And turn the generator on. Whenever the system operates, we recommend that you use ear protection. <laughs>